Hello everyone! This video is part of a series where we are exploring TypeScript's features with the help of a React application. Our goal is to learn how to better type our code in order to improve confidence and velocity in development. We are now at a moment where we are exploring a little bit of the theory behind TypeScript, so we are using an online playground where we can write TypeScript code. This comes from the TypeScript's website itself. And later on, once we are done with this basic theory, we will go back to our React application and start applying this to a more real-world world scenario. In the previous video, we have discussed enums. And in this video, I want to continue with some other types that you may see around in TypeScript. The first type is the unknown type. And the unknown type is used whenever we don't know in advance the type of a certain value. How do we use it? Well, we simply add the other types with a colon and then the keyword unknown. I'll adjust this to be let instead of const, like I did two videos ago. And I will move to the online playground and try to work with it. So let's say, let's see what happens if we have a unknown variable, like so. We will type this as unknown. And let's see what we can do with it. So I think it would be possible to assign a string. Hello, like so. Mm, not really. TypeScript is already complaining and saying that, oops, sorry, <laughs> this should be unknown variable, right? Okay, yeah, then, then it's exactly as I thought. So we can assign a string. If we want to change unknown variable to a number, we can also do so. If we want to change it to a Boolean, we can also do so. However, what may not be allowed to do is, for example, to call a method on it. Let's say I will call unknown variable dot push hello. And as you can see, if you remember from two videos ago, the push method is actually a method that belongs to an array, right? So it's TypeScript is saying, okay, I don't really know if the unknown variable is going to contain an array or not. Here, you are declaring that this object is of type unknown, so I cannot guarantee that you will have a dot .push method available if you try to call it. Now, let's see how we could solve this. Well, we could, for example, create uh, an unknown, an array of unknowns, right? So now we have a problem here because this string is not assignable to type unknown, so I would have to wrap it around my array definition, the number five as well, the false as well. And now, as you can see, TypeScript does not have any idea of which elements are going to be within our array, but it knows that the unknown variable is going to be an array of sorts. So I can push anything I want into this array. I can push, let's say, number five as well. I can also push false. So in the end here, if I were to console.log this array, I should see false, hello, five, and false, right? Console.log unknown variable. Let's see what's going to print. Exactly, false, hello, five, and false. Now, another interesting thing is that, again, if I try to access the, let's say, first element, the zeroth element of my array, and then I try to print its length. And TypeScript is going to say, okay, again, I cannot guarantee that you will have a length attribute to any element of this array. So a length attribute could be, for example, of a string, but I don't know if this first element of my unknown variable array is going to be of type string. If I tell TypeScript that this is going to be a string, then it's going to allow us to use the dot length, but then I will lose the power of this unknown here. Okay, so the unknown we can use whenever we don't know the type of a variable or of any value for, for that matter in advance. And I think this can be useful sometimes, right? Maybe you will see this more used in the context of generics where we want to receive a type from the external or from, from outside of our type definition. 
and we want to allow for this type to be flexible so we may not know what's going to be the type in advance we may set it to be unknown as default but this we will come back in the future when we talk about generics the second extra type that i want to discuss with you is the any type and the any type is the worst type in typescript i hate it and i never use it and you should hate it and you should never use it <laughs> I mean, okay, okay, I will give some, some, I will allow you to use it in, in only very specific scenarios. But basically what any, the any type does is that it disables type checking. So if I type this as any, like so, then I can do anything. As you can see, I can assign a string, like so, I can assign a five, or for that matter, I can assign um, um, an array here, and then I can switch to false, and then I can try to run this code, and oops, doesn't do anything, right? It, I mean, there is probably some error in the compilation because, well, it's not possible to push to a Boolean, right? So here, it doesn't do anything. Let's try to console.log unknown variable and let's see what shows in our console oops nothing and that's because we are not really able to compile the code the problem is that we have no errors here i mean we are able to compile it and just just to be strict about it we are able to compile it but we are having problems executing it because in type uh, because in javascript you shouldn't be able to push something that is not or you shouldn't be able to uh, access the push method of a boolean right that doesn't exist so as you can see by using the any type we are simply disabling type checking and that's not a good practice now there is one situation where you are allowed to use the any type and that's something that well i think it's always better if there is an alternative right so if you can avoid the any type at any costs do so but sometimes you are using with, uh, you're dealing with legacy libraries from JavaScript, which you don't really have a, a type system. So they will simply default to any, right? So in these cases where you don't have a type for the library, where the library does not provide a type declaration for its functions and its functionalities, then it's okay to use the any type. But I personally, allow it only in these very specific cases i i don't really want to use the any type at any point in time of course if i am doing for example i think some videos ago in the introduction to the react course i used the any type to type the props of a function but that was just for the sake of of, of an example right i think i removed it if i'm not mistaken but if i didn't exactly so we already removed that example from the repository it was just something very temporary so what i would say is we really don't want to commit any variables with the any type if we use it temporarily just to um, speed up a little bit the development before we commit the code and then we undo the changes that's okay as well so that's the any type as any other type you can define it by using the colon and followed by the keyword any the next type is the void type and the void type is normally indicating that there is no type at all right so here it's normally used in functions that return nothing so for example if i have well okay i can leave this as any it's not a problem so if i have a function which is going to have no return this function receives no parameters and then I will type the return of the function as void and here I could say console.log something hello and I execute the code then oops sorry I should get rid of these little problems here exactly now it's okay now the code is executing again and as you can see I'm consoling the value of the unknown variable so I'll just delete this I want to clear my console like so, then I have my no return function, which is declared, but it's not called. So I come here, I call the no return, and then I print hello. Now the problem will be if I return something, right? If I say return one or return one, like so, 
TypeScript is going to start complaining. It will say, oops, wait, um, you are not really supposed to return anything from this function. This is a type void. If you have any return that returns anything different than void, which means if it returns any type of any classification or any, any basic or any complex types that you may define, if it returns anything, then this is not void. Right, so you cannot return anything from this function. If I change the definition of the return type to number here, for example, then I am allowed to write return one, but I am not allowed to return number or sorry, I'm not allowed to completely emit, uh, omit the return statement. So this is also a little bit of an introduction into typing functions. We saw in the previous video how to type the parameter of a function or two videos ago, I think, how to type the parameter of a function. And in this video, we saw we are introducing how to type the return type of a function. But again, we come back to this in more details very soon in the future when we discuss typing functions in more details. Right, for now, I will just delete this or we can leave with the void here because that's what we are covering in this video. The next type is the null type. And the null type is, as you may expect, used when a value can be null. And here I'll present two types simultaneously, the null type and the undefined type. So the undefined type is used when a value can be undefined, like so. Let me update this. I will simply change this to let and this to let as well. And these types, null and undefined, they are not very useful if you just use them by themselves. So let's say let null var is of type null. Okay, I cannot really do anything apart from assigning it to null, right? I can say this, but I cannot say null var is equal to one, for example. This is not allowed, right? So the null type is not really useful by itself. And it's the same case with the undefined type. If I type this as undefined, then it's not going to allow me even null. So undefined is more strict than null in the sense that an undefined variable should have no value whatsoever. So here I can only assign the undefined, but I can also, or I cannot assign any value that is different than undefined. If I type null here, then you will see that I am not allowed to write the undefined type or to assign the undefined type to my variable. Now, when do we use the null and the undefined? And here are two examples. For example, suppose that I have a string or that I want to allow a certain string to also have the value of null. Then I can use this OR operator that we already saw in the previous video when we were discussing enums. I can use this OR operator to allow to be either a string or the null value. And the same case with undefined. I can use this OR operator to allow my, my variable to be either a string or entirely, completely undefined. And remember that in JavaScript with strict equality checks, null and undefined are different, right? So I will just do a console log here of null var equals, equals, equals undefined. And you will see that this is going to be different, right? Because Oops, sorry, I just need to assign a value here. Yeah, so I just need to, TypeScript is complaining that I was trying to access the value of null var before any assignments. Now I have assigned it to null. And once I run this, I should see false because these two types are different. Now, if I remove one equal like so, then I see true. <laughs> and this is non-strict checking in JavaScript, right? So I would recommend always to use the triple equal sign because this is more strict and it allows us to do or it allows us to catch more inconsistencies in our code. For example, if I were to write something like this, I see false. But if I use anything in that, that would be suppose um, an empty string and false here, for example, then this could be true. 
right? So it's the, the empty string is considered to be a falsy value. But um, if I simply compare the two using the double equal, then it's going to say, okay, they are equal, but in reality, they should definitely not be equal, right? So we could um, run into some problems if we always use the double equal sign, it's less strict and we may run into some unforeseen hide to, uh, hard to spot bugs. Good. The last type that I want to explore with you is the never type. And the never type is basically saying that, well, a type should never occur. For example, the only thing I can think of here, I think, is about the return type of a function that should never return, right? So maybe we could try to think of a function, let's say function never return, which has a type of never or a return type of never, and then it has a body. And I have a problem already because here the function is actually having, as TypeScript is informing, is actually having a reachable endpoint. So how do I fix that? Well, one way is to throw a new error, right? So no reachable endpoint. Yeah, so I mean, this is the most, let's say, the example case, quote unquote, of the never type. We can also type the variable like let, let's say never var is of type never but then I can never assign any value to this variable. So the variable doesn't really have any purpose, right? So if I try never var is equal to undefined, this is not allowed. If I try this equals to null, this is not allowed. Strings are not allowed, numbers are not allowed. So there is no point whatsoever in defining a variable of type never. I think that this is going to be a very rare type, but in case you come across this type, at least you know it exists. Okay, great. That's it for this video. And if you want to get updates whenever I upload a new video to my channel, then make sure to subscribe and you will receive a notification every time a new video is available. Also, if you're interested in any development topics, make sure to write down in the comments and I will take that into consideration when planning the future of the channel. Maybe the case that I can think of a series or of a standalone video or even a more extensive course in a topic that is of your interest. And if you see a topic that interests you in the comments, give a thumbs up. I will also consider the importance of the topics or the popularity of the suggestions when planning the future of the channel. As I mentioned, or as I've been mentioning in the last few videos, there are no git commits for this introduction to, to the TypeScript theory. But once we go back to our React application, we will start committing our code and then I will make the git commit links available in the description of the videos. Thank you for your time and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.